Okay, everybody, I want to try to take this in one take, video this in one take. <clears throat> what I have here is what uh, I firmly believe to be a fragment of a precious metal asteroid. It's made out of platinum. I can give you a little bit of background on it. Uh, found in the Lexington area, Lexington, Virginia area. Uh, 1971, 14 year old girl found it after the family heard a loud boom the night before. She found it in her yard the next day. Uh, she held on to it the rest of her life. She passed away about a year and a half ago. Uh, me and my brother purchased it from her family. All right, let's see if we can get started here. This basically is, uh, hopefully I can get this done in less than 10 minutes. But anyway, uh, what you're seeing here is a side view. This meteorite weighs around 1,700 grams. And it's tightly packed crystals of different sizes. Um, <clears throat> they uh, don't seem to have any consistent shape uh, could be due to extreme pressures that they were exerted under so anyway uh, I'll give you some other profile shots on this thing <clears throat> Another slightly different angle. Uh, it does have a few voids in it and fractures running through it. The fractures I feel like maybe have, uh, were caused by the explosive entry that it went through when it fragmented <clears throat> all right this is a picture of me and my brother he's we purchased it together uh, it's me on the right him on the left maybe right right here for size comparison <clears throat> Another interesting angle. Uh, you can see here's two main fractures running through it. One right here. You can see the pointer one right here and uh, along all the sides the crystal sheared off but uh, I'll show you some some different angles on the nose cone I believe it went into an oriented flight with the nose the top of this thing facing frontwards but anyway you can see a lot of uh, I don't know what you would call them I'm sure the scientists have a name for it it's like uh, little lines running through it in different places <clears throat> and uh, also the bottom of this thing that it's this lower section here I'll get ready to show you there's a uh, actually part of the original outer surface of this thing Okay, these are some images of the nose or the small end of it. You can see the crystal formations are much um, much more intact. You can see how the different crystals are shaped. Uh, some of them look like a pyramid. Some are three-sided like right here. 
you have to see your points. Also, there is, uh, believe it to be, olive bean inclusions in it. Here's a green one. There are other areas on it with uh, more like a garnet color that are more like sheets that were, I guess, like intrusions between the crystals. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Let's move on to another image. Uh, here's a better, more of a close-up of the nose of it. As you can see right here, a green olivine crystal of some kind. Okay. That's another angle there, but anyway, I'm getting ready to show you the um, the outer surface. Uh, there were multiple impacts on this surface this thing suffered over time. I don't know what, uh, how soon or late after this thing was formed, but anyway, you can see the different impact craters on it. And they do uh, correspond to that ratio, like one to five, the depth is about one to the uh, five radius or five diameters greater than the depth. And this is a really interesting feature right here. I think this is uh, what would have been a, a very high velocity impact. <clears throat> Of probably a micrometeorite but uh, it has a lot of the uh, characteristics of a what uh, what would be called a nested crater hey okay, right here you'll see a series of ridges going down inside of the crater. There's three distinct zones. And let's see. Um, also, I would like to point this out down towards the bottom, right along in here. You can see fractures. And I, I, I think that it came from either being struck by other smaller uh, fragments before it ever came into this area mm -hmm. or it could have come from originated from uh, the explosive detonation that it underwent when it went through the fragmentation on entry <clears throat> here is another photograph more straight on it's going to show up in the video but you can see that those series of uh, rings also if you look at the I'll look at the previous image you probably get a better view um, There are features um, that are seen on some impact craters. Uh, I guess they call them radi uh, radial lines that are moving away from the, the impact main crater. <clears throat> According to my research, you know, there's two different kinds of crater that can be formed. One is called a cone crater because it's shaped like a cone. 
and also these other impact sites are what they call a parabolic shape okay All right, I know a lot of people probably are wondering, okay, if this thing was a meteorite, where's the fusion crust? Well, according to my research, fusion crust is uh, formed at around 2,800 to 3,000 degrees on an ordinary meteorite like a stony, stony iron or iron meteorite. Uh, According to what I've read in different publications, that is the estimated uh, maximum temperature a meteorite would experience entering our atmosphere, uh, 2,800 to, to 3,000 degrees. Well, platinum has a melting point of around 3,300 degrees, which is well above that temperature that these things would experience coming in so plus you know could be a uh, late fragmentation <laughs> but anyway <clears throat> I just wanted to share this with y'all and see what you think you can always put a comment in but anyway I kept it down to a little under 12 minutes folks uh, I'm interested to see what y'all think